Without adequate testosterone, a man may lose his sex drive, experience erectile dysfunction, feel depressed, have a decreased sense of well-being, and have difficulty concentrating. So today we're going to talk about testosterone deficiency on 15 Minutes with Longevity. With us, I have our resident, Dr. Sidi Guli. Hello, Sidi. Hi, Giselle. How are you doing? Well, thank you. Excellent. Talking to us today and joining us in studio is Dr. Sandeep Bana, an endocrinologist who will be telling us about the treatment of testosterone deficiency. Welcome, Dr. Bana. Thank you for having me here. So what is testosterone deficiency actually? Deficiency, <laughs> sorry. So <laughs> it's obviously each male has testosterone. We reach our peak at around age 21 and then it slowly starts That declining. explains a lot, hey? yeah. 21. <laughs> <laughs> Lock them all up. Exactly. <laughs> Notice my silence. <laughs> and once it starts reaching a certain threshold mm -hmm. where it goes below the level of 12, that's when you're going to start experiencing some of the symptoms that you've just mentioned. What is 12? Is that a measurement? It's a, it's a measurement. Okay. It's a level, uh, nanomole, so normal is 12 to 27. And once you start getting it below that, erectile dysfunction, uh, lack of libido, uh, cognitive function becomes an issue. Um, okay, cognitive function being your memory, how your brain processes. Concentration. Okay sleep and so they really are related then definitely it's amazing because i always thought that was a bit of a joke <laughs> no no it's definitely <laughs> it's definitely yeah. true okay so when the guy starts using the excuse of i've got a headache then you've got to start you've got a real problem on oh your that's head. interesting <laughs> <laughs> dr Zaina, um sorry giselle i want to get into what testosterone actually does before we go into the deficiency because the overall perception with a lot of people in general when it comes to male health is that testosterone is linked to sexual drive and and you know your erectile function or dysfunction. What else is the hormone really good at doing for a man? Well, it goes beyond sexuality. And I mean, all the recent work in the last 10, 15 years have shown that. So it's very important because it influences bone mass, lean body mass. Lack of it is definitely gonna cause a visceral accumulation of fat. So that's the punch that we see. And with that comes metabolic syndrome. So there's an increased risk of diabetes. They've shown when the testosterone level uh, drops, the blood pressure is more likely to be up. Um, the level of cholesterol is more likely to be up. So it goes beyond sexuality. We spoke about the cognitive function issues. Mm. And certainly at a biochemical level, it influences inflammation as well and the immune system as well. So it reaches beyond uh, sexuality. So it's an extremely important hormone Very important. in the body. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I'm quite interested in that whole measurement because I don't think you've ever heard someone, I mean, I go and have my blood pressure taken, I go and have my cholesterol. But, you know, how are we seeing more and more testosterone deficiency? Mm. Why are we seeing it? And, I mean, are we testing regularly for it? Is it a stat that, that men should know about? Yeah, I think, look, people have become a bit more aware of it because we're talking about sexuality more openly mm. since the uh, Viagras of the world came out about 15 years ago. And because we're talking more about sexuality, I think we're more comfortable talking about erectile dysfunction. And so that is one of the hallmarks. And certainly if you've got erectile dysfunction, lack of libido, it's one of the tests that need to be done. Now there are other causes, you know, an undactive thyroid, a high prolactin level, which is a hormone made in the pituitary gland. Um, there's other rare conditions that can also cause uh, erectile dysfunction or lack of libido. But certainly that's one of the numbers that they need to go and get tested for. And a GP can do that. And uh, if they're comfortable with treating that condition, then it's fine. Of course, if they need to refer the patient on, then they would come and see an endocrinologist or a urologist. Certainly, once it drops below 12, we need to investigate the cause for it. Now, the reason why we're diagnosing more about now, it's because we're more aware of it. But also, obesity rates have started going up. Type 2 diabetes uh, rates have started going up. And we know in diabetic patients, 50% of male, uh, males will have a low testosterone. Patients with the metabolic syndrome uh, or the PONJ, mm -hmm. up to 60, 70% of these patients will have a low testosterone. So certainly we've seen more of it and we've become more aware of it. So Does I think stress play a role in it? I mean, are there some people who are more susceptible? I can understand you know, the obesity issue and the diabetes issue, but what about your, just your average executive male, you know, businessman who's highly stressed, eating lots of rich meals, yeah. um, not exercising a lot. 
And so certainly if you're trying to correlate it to the hormone cortisol, which is very closely yes. uh, associated to stress, mm. we know in conditions where the cortisol levels are high, like Cushing syndrome, they will have erectile dysfunction. Uh, where the stressful lifestyle per se will affect it directly at a hormonal level hasn't been shown. But we know, like in females, uh, you need to feel like you need to be engaging in sexuality. And so certainly if you're tired, if you're stressful, it will affect it in more than one level. So maybe not directly at the level of testosterone, but it will affect the neurotransmitters, which are also important for libido, like serotonin. So in terms of watching out for signs that if you're a male and you're worried you may have low testosterone because obviously the culture of over testing is also quite known and you know shows shows like this are also meant to educate on when to be alert and when to test for something i'm assuming one as a hormone test is not the most it's not the cheapest test to do so there must be signs that a man can take note of and and be alert and and then ask for the test what are the signs that a man is suffering from a lower testosterone than normal so, you know, a lot of the signs and symptoms of testosterone deficiency can be associated with just mm. having a stressful life or going through m middle age, you know. Right. Um, I was going to ask you that. So, do you have to be middle aged or can you be 25 and have. Oh, no, you can, you can be okay. 25. Mm. Uh, testosterone deficiency can happen at, yeah, any age, but it's rare at that age. And primarily when it happens at that age, it's probably a testicular problem where they've had. Um, a problem with the testes either because of torsion where they've injured it or they've had mums or one of the other conditions that can affect the testes uh, by and large testosterone deficiency at the other ages so beyond 45 is going to be either because of a pituitary gland problem or because of a secondary cause where there's a lot of inflammation from having that poncho diabetes or one of the chronic inflammatory conditions the hallmark though it's a late sign is mm erectile dysfunction so the quality of the erections down the incidence of early morning erections gone down and the quality of uh, the sex intercourse changes as well so though that would be the hallmark the others like you mentioned can be fatigue malaise poor concentration sleep becomes disordered uh, weight starts going up blood pressure may be a bit more difficult to control diabetes becomes a bit more difficult to control they have dyslipidemia so whilst the latter three have many other causes for it mm. certainly this can mm. contribute towards it bone mass goes down uh, lean body mass goes down so those will be non-specific and common to a lot of other conditions mm. as well but at this point in time yeah if you're above the age of 45 and you've got any of the symptoms I've spoken about certainly it would warrant a test. And some of these other factors, I mean, you spoke about sleep. Now, we know for a fact that this can be a big problem for mm -hmm. very busy A-type personality people. So the key thing is not just to go by one symptom. It's a cluster okay. of symptoms. So if you've got more than two of the ones I've mentioned uh, and you're above the age of 45, yeah, you certainly should be looking at the level of testosterone. And hopefully the cost of these tests will be coming down in the future so and be standardized. So now That's we fun. have this problem. Mm. What are we going to do about it? <laughs> well, like any other endocrine condition, when there's too much of a hormone, we try and bring it down. And in this case, when there's too little, we're mm. going to try and bring it up. So there's various ways of bringing it up. Certainly in this country, we've got uh, injectable testosterone. You've got the short-acting weekly testosterone injections. And you've got the convenient three-monthly testosterone injections. And then we don't have the patches in this country. We don't have the gels commercially available, but they can certainly be compounded by compounding pharmacies. And the testosterone transdermals can be available in 2.5%, 5%, 10%. Those are obviously um, uh, pharmaceuticals. And yes. Are there natural ways that we can deal with a testosterone deficiency or not? Not when we're good sitting question. with levels. That's mm -hmm. a very good question. Not mm. when we're sitting with levels that are below 12 unless there's a treatable condition that we spoke about earlier. So if you've got an underactive thyroid, treat that and the testosterone okay. will come up. Lose the weight, A high prolactin. Exercise. The lose the weight is very important, but we've noticed that it becomes a vicious cycle because if you don't have testosterone, you have difficulty in moving okay. the fat as well and converting it into lean body mass. So there's lots of studies that have shown that, yes, if you've got a treatable cause of the obesity other than the low testosterone and you get it down, yes, testosterone levels will start coming up. Uh, and there's other studies that have shown without testosterone, uh, the amount of weight that comes down is min minute, minuscule. Hmm. And 
can if we don't treat it let's say i'm getting all of this i don't care I, you know what i'll just have this problem or whatever problem it is because some people don't want to deal with problems what could happen to what could happen to a man who doesn't treat a testosterone deficiency well all of these symptoms will obviously remain unabated so they, they'll stay and they'll mm -hmm. probably get worse over a period of time but certainly in these men you will start seeing uh weight going up and it's the body percentage fat the bone mass can start decreasing certainly if they've got a blood pressure problem uh, becomes higher over a period of time if they're diabetic it gets worse and if they dyslipidemic where the cholesterol is a problem also gets worse so that's not going to miraculously reverse it's something that needs to be made but it's not going to result in a cancer or something like that no so they have shown that men but these are now observational studies, they retrospective, where they've looked at men with low testosterone, and certainly the all-cause mortality is higher. But we need to be doing prospective studies okay. uh, to be looking at that. Uh, in terms of cancer rate, no, they're not at a higher risk of all the other cancers. That certainly that hasn't been shown. But we do know that men who develop prostate cancer, if you look at them and you categorize them against the aggressive, in the medium form and the low grade ones the ones that have low testosterone certainly present with a higher grade prostate cancers so vigilance is definitely key yes i think it's really important men take care of themselves particularly that part of their bodies and i think there was a great uh, great conversation dr Varner. thanks for joining us and one Thank tip you. that we can really take out of this is that erectile dysfunction will predate a potential heart attack by five years now if that isn't an incentive to go and get it checked and seek specialist help, I don't know what is. A really, really important tip. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you here next week for your dose of health news. Good night, stay well, be healthy and have a great weekend.